Hello, YouTube. Welcome back to the show. All right. So we're going to talk about photography today. You're looking beautiful. You're looking beautiful. OK, so we're going to talk about photography. Specifically, we're going to talk about skin retouching and skin. You know, I get this compliment a lot, you know, on my Instagram page. If you follow me on Instagram, you know, you see my photos. And I'm not saying this because I think I'm that guy. I'm just telling you what the people tell me. OK, and they wonder, how are you doing your skin retouches? And I remember telling the guys, like, hey, I do my skin retouches in Lightroom. He was offended, um, to say the least. He was very offended. And and he was like, you're not doing a frequency separation of things. And I was just like, yo, 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 you're right. And I know in the comments, some of you are going to get very irate. All right, bring it. Okay. I'm telling you, I know about frequency separation. We use it all the time here at Dojo Media. But don't worry. Sometimes we kind of like to save a little time around here. Okay. Because time is money, as they say. The key thing you need to understand about skin is that usually the things that you don't want to see the blemishes, the, the, the harshness is usually from skin texture. Now, again, please, you know, don't be so irate in the comments. All right. This is a quick tool. All right. This is the quick fix. This is not the end all be all, but this is the way if you want to test it out, test it out and see what your model looks like when you do this. Okay, YouTube, we are back. So one of the things I want to do better this year is I want to bring you into the fold of this here desk and I want to teach you some stuff because I never teach you some things about editing, but I get questions all the time about editing. So this is why we're doing this skin retouch tutorial in Lightroom. First thing I'm going to say in Lightroom, I always use, or right, I use the main screen on my M1 MacBook Pro because, I mean, there's not a better display. Obviously, I have this big one up here, but we're going to focus on using that, especially in Lightroom it fits very well. A lot of times people want to show you these extreme examples of people that need skin retouches. I'm not going to do that because it's not really realistic to what I do. So I'm going to take you through a number of photos. So the first set of photos I'm going to take you through are going to be the photos of this person here, Christina Taylor. She's actually a professional model. But the thing about professional models is sometimes they need some skin retouching too. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that face so you can see. As you can see, there's some texture here. You see it is shot on the Canon R5, so you already know, it's not gonna lie to you. It's gonna pick up everything. But you can see there's some evident skin retouching that needs to be done on her face. So there are some, some tools you're gonna use. Obviously, we're gonna be using the brush tool. But the other two things I want you to focus on is going to be using texture and using clarity. So what we're gonna do is actually remove texture and we're gonna remove a little bit of clarity and I'm gonna show you how that works. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mask out her face, okay? So when you were masking, I want you to make sure you don't hit things like you know eyebrows don't hit the eyes okay we ain't trying to make the eyes look blurry we skip the hair we skip the lips so we really just want to focus on the main areas of the skin all right that's going to be the forehead that's going to be the cheeks you know the nose the chin those type of things you can also apply this to the body if you want to if you feel like you need to retouch some of the skin okay so let's break that down so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a brush i'm going to do a custom brush and here i'm just going to draw over her face in the areas that are just mostly skin. Okay, so that's gonna be a cheeks, it's gonna be a nose, things like that. Okay, we're gonna even go a little bit under these eyes. So as you can see, we have everything painted, we have the face painted where we want it. What you're gonna do is from there, you have your brush, you're gonna scroll down, okay, in your brush adjustments. You're gonna go to presence, you're gonna see texture. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lower that texture down. You can lower that texture down, I always give people a range between 40 and 60. If you go further than that, it can kinda look a little fake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to about 60. What I want you to see, we're gonna do before, after, before, after and you can evidently see that the skin is it was softer all right it looks like we airbrushed it again frequency separation is going to look a little bit better i think but most of the time because we're posting these things on social media you will never tell okay now i'm gonna lower that clarity some too so now with the clarity lower before i i i, I after okay before after there's an evident change in her skin texture okay so now that may seem like that was extreme but when i click on this and it's gone perfectly normal okay so again before 
after, before, after. So what we've done is we've taken some of that glow in her face. We've now controlled that. And you can control that through clarity. The way you control the skin and that texture is going to be through actual texture. The other thing I would do is use your healing brush, okay? So when we use that healing brush, we're gonna go over here to that brush, that spot healing, okay? And we're just gonna find that spot. And the reason why I like to do this is sometimes texture can't save things like maybe a pimple that's there. So all you have to do is with that spot healing, find somewhere that matches. You wanna also make sure that when you're in your mode, there's a mode where it can be clone and there's a mode that could be heal. You could do content aware, but you wanna make sure you're using heal, okay? Make sure you're using heal because clone and heal, they look differently. Um, when you wanna clone, that's like clone stamping, so you can do that in Lightroom also. But the main thing you wanna focus on is healing those things, okay? You wanna make sure they're all clear. So from there, I'm just gonna leave this zoom then I want you to see the before and after so we're gonna go back to that mask before after before after you could evidently see the change in her skin so that's one example now here's me okay sitting doing my thing living my life wearing my cuts clothing so you can zoom in here again 45 megapixels okay now a lot of y'all don't know like I have really good skin in person but it doesn't matter when you're shooting 45 megapixels the Canon R5 is gonna pick up everything okay so what we're gonna do, same idea. This is a different skin texture. This is a skin tone difference, skin texture difference, skin environment, so there's some difference. And you know, male, black male, darker skin, just same, like we have some differences here. So what we're gonna do, same approach. In this case, I'm gonna make sure I don't hit my beard as much. We're gonna hit that nose. We also gotta make sure we miss the sunglasses. We have me here, we're gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna go over to presence. I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna bring that texture down the same way I just did on Christina. I'm gonna show you quickly before, after, before, after. You can see that that clears up. And again, to mitigate the oiliness that we have that natural oil, I'm gonna bring that clarity down. Before, after, before, after. It's an evident difference. When we zoom out, it looks good, okay? It doesn't look crazy. It looks normal. It looks like it's a regular skin retouch. It doesn't look unnatural. But if I do before and after, before and after, you can see the difference even at this scale, even with this. So here's another cut shot. We actually shot this at the same time. I had my black tea, Morgan had her black tea, but I wanna show you something because she's obviously naturally beautiful. She has pretty good skin already. But if we zoom in, you can evidently see the texture in her skin. Now you don't wanna lose the texture in people's skin. What you wanna do is just soften it up just a little bit. And even in this case, even though it's, it's pretty good already, we can still make it better by doing the same ideas. We're gonna bring that texture down using that mask. So I'm gonna bring that down to about 56. Now again, naturally beautiful woman, don't have to worry about anything. But again, you can make it better. So you can see this texture in her skin just get soft, okay? It's a little bit more pleasing. Now, what I wanna also show you is that these are all edited. Here, before, after, before, after, before, after. I'm only showing you these because at some point, I gotta give you some tutorials on how I edit my photos, okay? So even for myself, before, after, before, after. What's up y'all? I would like to take a moment, all right, in this video to shout out my sponsor Cuts. Now you've seen some of their shirts throughout the videos. You know, I had the talking head in the, in the studio. I had the talking head giving you the walkthrough of how I edit, but you've also seen, you know, one of the women's shirts and one of the photos of my friend Morgan. So please go down there below, hit that link down below. If you're looking for the best fitting shirts with the best material, okay, you can wear these, dress them up, dress them down, whatever you want to do. If you're looking for the best hoodies on the market, go ahead and do that. And ladies, if you're watching this channel, please go and try out some of those shirts. I promise you, you will not regret it. But I would like to thank Cuts for sponsoring this video and always keeping me, as you can see, in this too, dressed very nicely and ready for whatever, whatever the day is coming to, to, to give me to that day, okay? I know I'm excited, I'm too excited about this, but I just know that you will love it too, the same way I love wearing their shirts. So hit that link down below. Now, last photo we're gonna do is going to be of Shayla. Okay, so we're gonna do this one of Shayla. Before, mm -hmm, and then after. So I've already edited these. The thing about Shayla is that, again, a, a person, another person with pretty good skin, but when you zoom in on these pictures, Canon R5, Sony a7 IV, high megapixel camera, so you're gonna get a lot of texture out of them. So what we're gonna do here, same idea. I'm gonna show you another technique that you can add to that arsenal when it comes to retouching skin. 
Again, same principle we went through, pretty much made our mask around that face, and we're gonna do the same thing. What we're gonna do is bring that texture down, same idea. I'm gonna bring it down to that 56. Again, you can see already, it's already better. We're gonna bring that clarity down to about, we'll say 10. Okay, so now we've just controlled, you know, the natural shine yet again. So it is, I mean, when I zoom out, there you go. Does it, does it look bad zoomed out? Okay, before, after, does it look bad? Let's do the before the mask, okay? Does it look bad? It, it has a natural look to it, but things are just a little bit more clean. Okay, so now let's zoom in here, all right? She has this here blemish. What you can do on here is that same idea. We're gonna increase the size of that spot healing, okay? And then I'm gonna just, boom, make a spot. Wow, that's it. Again, I've tried to tell people that Lightroom is extremely intelligent. If you just let it work and just let it do its thing, it will work for you. So that quickly, I didn't do any frequency separation. I didn't do any clone stamping. And just that click, I was able to remove that from her arm, okay? So another thing I wanna show you, last thing, last technique, all right? This video is longer than I thought it was gonna be. So we're gonna create another mask, all right? One of the things we do in a lot of publications, some of our uh, headshot shooting, some of our glamour shots, is we like to dodge and burn. So can you dodge and burn, you know, in Lightroom quickly? This is another video that can be made, but we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna make two different masks. So one of the masks is going to be for brightness. Okay, so we're gonna do the dodge and burn. So I'm gonna hit here, I'm gonna hit the nose a little bit, and then I'm going to, you know, hit the forehead here a little bit. We're gonna hit some of the cheekbones, all right? So it's not gonna be the, the perfect dodge and burn, but I just wanna show you that I can do that. So once I've done that, what I'm going to do now, I've made my adjustments of where I want to dodge and burn, okay? So right now we're dodging. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna go to my highlights. What I can do now is I can control the brightness in these areas with that highlight tool. Okay, great. So before, after, before, after, we've just dodged. Check it out. We're gonna create a new mask, we're gonna do it again. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under the chin, okay? We're gonna go here in the nose there. I'm gonna look for other places, maybe this cheekbone here just a little bit. And I don't wanna go too crazy, I just wanna show you an example. So now instead of going highlights, we're gonna go shadows. We're gonna lower the shadows now. So now what we just did is created more depth. So now you have that before and after, okay? Now that's a little bit of aggressive, so we're gonna bring it down some more. And there you go, you have a little bit of dodging. And that can be applied. Say for instance, I have this brush. If I wanna apply it elsewhere, I can do the same thing. Say for instance, if I wanted to maybe apply it to, you know, her hair here, okay, boom. If I wanted to, boom, I just added it there. I'm just trying to show you that you can use a lot of those same techniques that you would in Photoshop even faster in Lightroom, so here you go. When I do everything overall, here's the mask, all mask, every single mask that we've done on the face, that's before, that's after, that's before, that's after, okay? It is just a way more pleasing picture. So there you go, I've given you a number of examples of how it can be applied to different people, different looks, different models, uh, different, you know, male, female, doesn't really matter. This technique can be applied across the board and I love using it because it saves me a lot of time and it allows me to not have to open Photoshop just like you. I know Photoshop very well. I mean, I like to open it because I'd rather do, I'd rather do something else for that time. I'm just saying, same for you. Either way, I hope that helps. I wanted to do this video for the people, all right, because us older people, I'm old, all right, old geezer here, all right, I, I'm used to using Photoshop. I started on Photoshop. For a lot of you, the, you, you newer photographers, you don't like Photoshop. You prefer to work in Lightroom. I wanted to provide a way for my Lightroom based users, you know, to still get good skin without having to open Photoshop. And there you go. I hope this has been helpful. Again, I get complimented a lot when it comes to, you know, my photos, the way they look, the way the skin pops. So I wanted to make sure I, I give that knowledge back to you all because, you know, without you telling me that I would not have the confidence 
to really keep shooting photos the way I do and editing the way I do. So I also appreciate you all for giving me that positive reinforcement that has given me the confidence to also teach you all this technique today. So please, if this video has been helpful, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because there's more coming, not only on the video side, but more photography on this here channel. And I will see you all in the next video. I love y'all. Thank you.